Hello, this is Dr. Patrick Porter, and welcome back to Brain Tap Business Journal. Today we're at, in Florida at the Florida Chiropractic Conferences, and we're interviewing the world famous Dr. Francis Murphy. Hello. Uh, thank it's you, great Patrick. to meet you here. And we've been wanting to get you on the show and interview you and all the technology and everything that you're learning about. I mean, a lot of people know you for the frozen shoulder and how that works, but yeah. you, when I looked at your booth and everything you're doing, the seminars you're sharing with the community, just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what got you into this new phase of uh, what you're out there doing right now, because you're traveling around the world, actually, yes. helping yeah. people, so tell us a little bit so about So, just got back from Australia. Um, I've been traveling with Dr. Mike Hall, and together we've been developing the science behind OTZ. So, in 2006 was the year that I discovered this this anomaly that seemed to be the cause of frozen shoulder syndrome and when corrected it instantly fixes frozen shoulder so it, it has had that effect on hundreds and hundreds of people so I did a um, I started to wonder how could this particular disorder affect the shoulder the spinal accessory nerve which is the the problem and not affect other cranial nerves. So I started to do cranial nerve exams and I found that every single person that had a frozen shoulder had at least four other cranial nerve disturbances. Things like facial distortions, trouble swallowing, uh, speech problems, jaw problems. Th things are related mostly to the face, hearing, and eyesight and smell. So uh, little by little we've been dis dissecting that and as we make these changes in people that at first were, was fixing just their frozen shoulders, all these other things were coming into view too. And so we started to really dive into the vagus nerve. And what we were doing is we were, we were making measurements, taking measurements of people's perfusion, which is their ability to to push oxygenated blood to the periphery of their body, uh, their heart rate, their um, oxygenation of their blood and their blood pressure, things like that. And then making these brain stem changes in the adjusting phase of treatment and then remeasuring afterwards and we we're seeing dramatic changes in people with all kinds of disorders. So this is the genesis of, of the scientific end that we're going for and then the other side of it is that we're we're out there teaching doctors how to identify the problem it's been fun it's been a good trip now do, do uh, does a chiropractor have some special knowledge before they come and see you to learn this technique or tell us what what you expect what kind of chiropractor are you looking for that would be the perfect fit for learning this technology well we're looking for chiropractor chiropractors that want to up their game they really want to help their patients in a way that they've never been able to help them before um, for a long time, we, we went around and thought chiropractors would look at what we were doing and they weren't, they didn't quite understand it. They were seeing the results and they were seeing that it was a chiropractic adjustment that was making the change, but it didn't resonate with them on a how is this happening kind of a thing. And, and recently, um, some two of the top researchers in chiropractic are, are Heidi Havoc and Bernadette Murphy. And, um, They've been to my lectures, our lectures, Dr. Halls and I, we speak on stage together a lot. And uh, I show a lot of video of instantaneous change that happens just after the adjustment. And so they became really interested in how are they able to do that. And so now they've gone out and they've got money to investigate OTZ and Brain DC's work. And so uh, we're really happy about that because that puts us in the, in the spotlight of chiropractic. Yeah, that's great. I know <clears throat> Heidi's a brain tapper, so I've, I've been able to speak with her a few times. It's pretty cool. Her and her husband, Glenn, oh, yeah. get on the brain tap and start using it. So they're she's actually people. the one that, yeah, she's actually the one that coined the term brain tapping. She posted oh, really? it on Facebook. She said, Glenn and I are brain tapping. We said, we're going to steal that so we can <laughs> turn, it into a, a, yeah, turn it into a verb. You know, that's always nice. <laughs> so with research now showing that this works, yeah. um, do they need any special instruments to do this in their office? What do, what do they need really to implement this kind of... Well, it's really complex. They need <laughs> their hands. <laughs> and so most people are walking around with them. Yes. <laughs> they bring them with them. It's, it's 
the beautiful thing about it is that uh, it's truly a chiropractic thing. I mean, chiropractors are kind of trained to to make a change in somebody's body in this way. You know, it's a chiropractic adjustment. Is that's the agent of change. Right. Then afterwards, after the adjustment, there's a whole lot of natural ability, uh, things that people do, that like dance and yoga and things that that are out there in the community that actually generate the building of rebuilding of the brain. So, mm-hmm. so the brain begins to break down when they have this particular disorder, and then once you fix it, you have to. Get the, get the brain functioning normally again so it can get strong again and, and its function can re, be repaired. And so with children, a lot of children um, are born with developmental disorders. And I, I believe, I truly believe that a lot of times it happens in the birthing process where the doctor is literally using leverage and muscle to take the child out of the womb and it affects the skull on spine relationship. When that is affected, the kids tend to have a little floppy head syndrome where their head tilt is in the same direction all the time. These children have problems crawling, they have problems that they're sensitive to light, they're sensitive to noises, they're fussy eaters, they're inconsolable a lot of the times, and parents just don't know what to do with them. And then I, I'll say to them, do you think that your parents will ask me, do you think that what you do can help my child? And I'm like, well, let's start here. Go back and look at the pictures that you've taken of your child since, since the child was born. And you'll be able to tell me whether they have a head tilt in one direction or not. Usually it's only in one direction and it's in every single picture. If you go home, you look at your pictures and it's that, call me back, I can help. That's a way that, you know, they're like, oh, I never noticed that. My kid's head is, is tilted in the same direction. And these kids get better, just like the frozen shoulders. Instantaneous change. It's awesome. That's great. Well, let's back up a little bit because you said something that I think the listeners, you kind of jump it over some things that they might not understand. Sorry. So, <laughs> so when you do the adjustment, you teach them this specific chiropractic adjustment, adjustment. Yeah. then after they're done, we know that people that dance, people that do martial arts, people that do yoga, they actually have better nervous systems when, oh, we, yeah. when we check it out with our, with our HRV, our data pulse analysis. And so what you're saying is after they have these adjustments, they should go do these things. What's happening in the brain that causes this improvement? Well, so, the, so when the skull and spine relationship becomes altered, um, the body puts a high priority on getting your eyes on the horizon line. So it drives your eyes to the horizon line. This is this vestibular system that's in your inner ear. But it distorts the rest of your body. And so your body is, is hundreds of joints, right? And they're arcing information into a, a very ultra-specific part of your brain that's designed to receive that information. It's designed to receive it. But when you alter your body's postural positions and working from a different platform, you're now arcing information into a different part of your brain. It's not designed to accept it. And now you're strengthening this part of your brain that it may give you some savant type of, uh, of behavior. It may give you some talent. But it, all, it affects the way you socialize with other people, the way you a normal person will relate to other people, even food, light, and other things, is altered. And uh, people prefer having their body function the way it's supposed to function, mm-hmm. and they don't mind giving up their, their special savant right. thing. I was just asked this morning, is, that, is everybody a savant in some way? I said, well, probably, but you just have to wait to act. So <laughs> I just answer that, that, answer that question. That's, <laughs> just answer that's that very question. interesting. Now I'm going to ask a question that's kind of selfish because with the brain tap system, of course, with our 1,600 doctors, we add anywhere between 20 to 30 every month that start to use brain tap. A lot of them ask me, how can I use this in my chiropractic care? And we had some great conversations, and I think that we can't do it all here, obviously, because it's, but, but let's just start the conversation a little bit so our doctors know that 
there's an answer out there because we were talking about you're talking about right and left brain and these seminars help to integrate the hemispheres yeah so tell me a little bit about what's happening there and then maybe i can add in a little bit about maybe how the brain tap oh yeah there. yeah i, I so, my so. my work really resonates with your work that's why we're here today and <laughs> so w once you remove the um I mean, chiropractors say it in a certain way. I want to say it in a way that everybody can understand it. You remove the interference, this um, arc of information to the brain, the correct pathway has been cleared. You have to work it just like a muscle that's gone weak. You see, if you put a cast in your elbow, usually it's there for six weeks, and there's some rehabilitation. If it was there for six months or a year or something like that, your arm would atrophy, the joint would atrophy, there'd be... It'd be very weak and it'd be very thin. Well, the same thing happens to your nervous system. When, when the pathway is not used, it becomes thin and weak. And so a lot of times you make the correction, but the person's wiring system can't handle the information. So what, the, what I see is the brain tap doing is driving the brain in a very low level way to bring up this bo the body's ability to accept movement type of information. Because the brain has to be strong enough to accept it. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, so we could do this activity that drives the joints to arc this information into the brain. But the, if the brain's not ready to accept it, then there'll be another breakdown. So you have to get it from how can I strengthen the brain and how can I arc the information into the brain in a way that's going to be symbiotic to that. And also what we see in, in these people that have these disorders is this really unusual head tilt, right? So you see the head tilt and what we do, Dr. Hall and I have discovered is that the head tilt is significant of a weak frontal lobe on that side. So you start to get this hemispheric imbalance where the analytical side of your body starts taking over the creative side. And so when we make our adjustment and we, we clear the path for, for movement to arrive in the brain in the same area, this becomes really, really important. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now you were talking about what are some of the ways a doctor who doesn't have all of your training yet but can kind of get a little bit at least of the flavor of what you're teaching so they can go, wow, I want to get more. Uh, when you're looking at somebody, because you even said to me, you looked at me and said a few things and of course I'm going to pull you aside get you to do a little adjusting with me. But, but tell me a little bit about what you see when, you, when, when a patient walks in, you seem to know some 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 knowledge that other people don't have. Yeah. So is there some things you can share for free with with our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> so the main thing I am looking for is postural distortion, and in a specific way. So that I see a head tilt, right? And so I see the body trying to drive the eyes to the horizon line and how it alters the entire body. But the body it, it doesn't just drive it in these lateral ways. What happens is the person's um, when their head is lifted like that, like this, to accommodate the horizon line, they have to roll forward. And so it rolls their humeruses forward. It, it shortens the space between their ribs. You see more of a flexion in the person. You see this head forward posture to accommodate all that. You see changes in the way they oppose gravity, the way they wear their shoes wear out in a slightly different way. Uh, you, head tilts and all this stuff become really, when you're looking at it all the time, if they blow up at you. You look at somebody and you say, oh my gosh, this is very obvious. And then when you make the change, you see everything kind of come back. You see their skull begin to translate back over the shoulders. The shoulders start to come back and now they're over the hips. Hips are over the ankles and they start to retrieve what I call the initiation platform for all movement. Mm. The anatomical position in all the textbooks is the bones of the body articulated in a neutral way. And it puts the body in this very ultra specific, what they call anatomical position. This is the initiation platform for all movement. But if you're starting all your movement from here, you're off. 
And so what we're trying to drive the posture back to where it's designed to be so that the brain can receive information the way it's designed to receive information. That's great. So when somebody's doing this kind of treatment protocol, what do you see? I, I know you did, like we've seen your videos on YouTube where people instantly, their shoulders get unfrozen and yeah. things like that. So, but what happens afterwards? We talked a little bit about, even in your past, you said, hey, is this something like you had a, you had a series of tapes or CDs that you were using where people would lay down and do something similar to the brain tap where they yes. would train their brain? So what is that? After they're done, besides sending them off to get dance lessons, uh, which should be a big task, that might be harder than straightening my spine, the, uh, to get me to dance, <laughs> but what, uh, what do you think about that? Some people call it the golden halo kind of time where the change is happening. What do you feel about that? And what prompted you to start using, a, it was a similar technology, but yes. to what we have. Well, I'm trying to set up the, uh, like, a, like you know already and, and like I've learned, is the hemispheric imbalance um, is hard to break down. I mean, when, when you become very analytical, your mind immediately, you know, you resist the, the part of your brain that is, is creative and the part of your brain that's analytical runs wild. It, it just gets stronger and stronger and you have to break that. You have to start to balance the brain so that the part of the brain that wants to receive this information from your body is strong enough to receive it and that the other hemisphere is not just overpowering. So this brain balance thing becomes really important when you send somebody to do yoga or you, you send somebody to do martial arts or you send somebody out there to dance. And I think dance can be one of the most powerful agents of change because now they're using their body in all these different ways. You know what I mean? They're opposing gravity the way man is designed to oppose gravity. We are born to walk 13 to 15 miles a day and over uneven surfaces. And you know, the topography of the earth is not flat, like we've made it, it's, it's odd. And that's the way our bodies were designed. And so as we arc this information into our brain, it has to make, the brain has to be able to accept it. We're really designed to sit and be brainiacs and you know, read so much and be so analytical. There's a balance there. And everything is about survival, a technique survival, even walking for 13. Uh, miles a day. It was all about your gaze. It was all about being able to look at the horizon and seeing prey, seeing water, seeing potential food, uh, shelter. And the higher you could see over the weeds and reeds and, and that, the further you could see, the better off you were. And so when this breaks down, it's a basic part of what we are breaking down. And, and this is what we're fixing. Right. Also, you know, in, in our in the study, my background is mostly NLP and things of that yeah. nature. So they'll say, hey, the physiology affects the psychology. So the posture you're describing is the posture for depression. I mean, if you want to feel bad, get into that posture. So you know, a lot of these these patients are coming in. They don't know why they they feel bad, and when they get the right adjustment, they start feeling better. So now we can start to explain what's happening, yeah. right? Yeah. So as part of your education with the doctors, what do they, just kind of give me, uh, if, let's say I'm interested in what you're doing, how would you kind of, uh, pitch is a bad word, but how would you educate me to learn about this so that, hey, I pick up the phone and hey, hey, Dr. Murphy, I want to be at your next seminar. What would you tell me? Here's what I would tell you. I would say that as a chiropractor, you may have noticed this already, but most people have a head tilt. And the frontal lobe of the brain is affected. When you have a head tilt, that is what's going on. Now, the frontal lobe of the body has three main functions. One is it inhibits flexion of the body. So if it's not functioning good, you can't be upright. You're, you're not inhibiting flexion, so you're starting to do this already. The other thing it does is it inhibits the temporal lobe of the brain, that fight, flight, freeze part of your brain, that reptilian part of your brain that is you know, it's really important if for me and you to have a social interaction. I've got to not be able, I have to see you as not a threat. And the frontal lobe allows that. It allows me to see you as a potential friend and I can have an interaction with you. The other thing that the frontal lobe does, it inhibits sympathetics. You cannot heal 
with the help, if your sympathetics are running wild, there's no possible way to heal. You're, you're, that's what it's all about, parasympathetic, sympathetic function. We should be in our sympathetics only 20% of the time. And 80% of the time, we should be parasympathetic. And that's changing. Right. And the more parasympathetic, uh, the more sympathetic we are, the more unhealthy we are. And then the other big thing is that doctors spend a lot of time with nutrition. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great thing. However, nutrition is really based on you getting enough oxygen. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough oxygen, you can't utilize the uh, nutrition because it's all about making energy and it requires oxygen. Mm -hmm. Also getting rid of a lot of things inside your body like carbon and hydrogen. The requirement is oxygen. You take in oxygen, you, you, it creates uh, CO2 and you blow that out of your lungs. You take in oxygen and it makes H2O and you urinate that out. So people that are crunched forward and have these disorders, they inhibit the amount of oxygen their bodies get. The pulse ox tells us that. Chest expansion tells us that, right? But so they feel crappy because they don't have enough oxygen. It's, it's just a very, very obvious because when we make this adjustment, and you see their posture immediately change, and then you put them back on the pulse ox, they go from like 95, 96, 97 to 100, or to 99% saturation, which tells me that, ah, oh, they're related. The postural thing is totally related to oxygenation of the body. And when you're crunched forward, you can't take a deep inspiration. You, know, it just, it, you just can't. When you're up like right like this, oxygenation is more easy. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the seminars that are coming up? The people we're gonna put we're gonna post your website on the podcast. So if you're wondering, gosh, I don't know, or they watch this a year from now, and there'll be others, they'll be able to go to your website from this podcast and find out where you're at, what you're doing. We definitely want to be more involved in getting our doctors to Thank learn you. from I them. appreciate um, that. So tell me where what's going on in the near future. Did somebody watching this because we're gonna probably put this out here in a couple of weeks? So, so in the very near future, in two weeks, we're in Chicago. And um, you can go to our website, otzhealthed.com, and you can, you can see our schedule. I'm embarrassed to say that I'm going to so many different places. I usually don't know until the week before <laughs> where I'm going, where I, you know, where that is. But I know Houston and Orlando before the end of the year as far as OTZ seminars. And... Um, I know that we have a bunch of speaking engagements coming up too. I'm sorry, I can't. No, we'll, I, we'll get them out there for you. We'll, we'll make the links available. Okay. And, uh, part of what we do is we also will feature this in our blog. So maybe we can get that information from you, your marketing people, whatever we need. So, so people will know about it. The key, the key here is that our doctors have our equipment. They paid us money for it. We want to get them to use it in relation to their practice. Right. So, um, you know, I, I've already reached out and said, hey, can you help us with this integration? Uh, because people are looking for protocols. They're looking, hey, how does, how does this really meet with chiropractic care? Yeah. So just in kind of ending here, because we, we're running out of time, but tell us a little bit about how do you see this? Because we're, we're more the emotional component, yeah. you know, people liberating their emotions so they yeah. can free up their body. And, and breath is really important to us. Oh, yeah. I mean, so we, we, we know that oxygen is key to the body functioning correctly. And, heal. and, and you know, with the nervous system, 70% of the nervous system is in the brain, which you're helping to spread the word in chiropractic, that they're really neurologists, not just backpackers, you know, and things like that. So tell us a little bit about how this connection, because the, uh, most uh, most doctors know there's the physical, mental, and uh, chemical reasons for stress, but what is your kind of take on that? Um, ask the question again, if okay. you would. So what's your take on how these all work together, the synergy between Oh, the something? chiropractic adjustment. Yes. So how I did it, and how I do it, and how I teach other doctors to do it is, to analyze the body in the way that we just discussed, to make this adjustment, which is the agent of change as far as aligning the body in a way that it can use the nervous system the way it's designed to be used. And then immediately after the adjustment, I put them uh, uh, on a table that will allow them their, their nervous system to relax a little bit, puts a little light motion into their body, not heavy motion, and then I, I put on the brain tap. And the, what that does is it begins to get the brain ready for the movement that's coming. As the, as the body 
is starting to say, okay, I'm working differently now. I'm starting to arc information into my brain. Can my brain accept it? This is where it comes in handy. And the people love it. People love this type of work. You make an adjustment, which has already made a big change in them, and now you alter their brain again by allowing it to re relax and re allowing that hemispheric communication to start to happen. It begins to happen, in my opinion, at a really low level at first because the brain, it, it can't work that well right now. Mm -hmm. But then as time goes on, they find themselves going deeper into it quicker and staying in that, what I call the pool, longer. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That when you, when you get the uh, brain tap on, at first you, you, your, your body is, and then you start to calm down and then, well, the more you do it, the quicker you get into that that alpha, you know, that, that change in, in the way the brain waves are working and the long, more long lasting the adjustment is. So it's a really, it's, it's really, the patients really appreciate it. Great. And then the next thing that I just want to end on is that you, because the chiropractors are always looking for ways to build a practice to, yeah. to make money. And you have a unique angle, I think, that in what you're saying is when you send people out to these dance studios or to these yoga places or martial arts, whatever it is, the movement therapy that you recommend, you're finding that people are referring back. Can you talk a little bit about that, how that works? Yeah, so I went out into the community. This is how I built my practice. And um, I, I had a huge cash practice, one of the biggest in the country. And I did it by uh, going out and making relationships with dance studios, yoga studios, um, Pilates, people that were into swimming, walking, movement, mm -hmm. basically movement. And because everybody, different movements resonate with different types of people, but the movement is really, really important. So I, I would go into these studios, or say a dance studio, for instance, and I'd meet somebody. Or maybe by chance they come in as a patient anyway, and I'm, oh, I'm interested in what you do. I want to start treating you for nothing. I want to treat you for free, this person that works at this dance studio. And I want to teach you what it is I can do, what I can do. Not so much that you can send me patients, but my patients need a place to go to build themselves back up again. And I can't do it here. I can't do everything here. So I need to have something that's fun for them, and, you know, that's in the community where they feel you know, like they're part of something, that other people are encouraging them to do it more often. And so what I find is that uh, people, reson this resonates with these people. Oh yeah, you want to help me get my business better. You're going to be sending me people. And in turn, it just comes back to you. The other, uh, the other dance uh, instructors find out about you and then they start sending their people to you. There's always this reciprocation. And it always is, how can I help you, that comes back, not how can you help me. And I've, that's always been my philosophy. As a leader, you take care of the people around you. It's really important to me. And I try to do that in every instance, and it's really worked out well. That's great. Well, you've heard from Dr. Francis Murphy. He's, he's offered, you can learn a lot about him also online at his website. What is that website again? OTZHealthEd.com. Right. And you can just type his name into YouTube. You'll see, you know, quite a few different videos out there if you want to learn. But I encourage you to do some more research. Get on the website. Look at it. Go to one of the seminars. Let's get this going so that we can help people out of this. I mean, I've never heard of this before, so uh, I think that um, a lot of the doctors out there might have heard about it, but not taking action. So let's let's take action. Let's get let's get helping people out there. Uh, so, thanks again. Thank you so much for having me.